Hello, and welcome to Applied Imagery's Tech Notes. Today's episode will cover integrating airborne LiDAR with mobile terrestrial LiDAR from HERE Technologies. Here we have an airborne LiDAR dataset already loaded. As we zoom around, we can start to see some of the added benefits of having airborne LiDAR. We can see since the collection was taken from above, we've got really good coverage on the rooftops and from some of the other elevated surfaces within the data. However, as we start to get down towards ground level, we can start to see some deficiencies. We can see that we're just not getting good data along the sides of these buildings, and it continues to get worse as we get down towards ground level. This is where complementing this data set with some mobile terrestrial LiDAR data will pay off. I'm going to use the Find Model tool by clicking the F key on my keyboard. And I'm going to start by searching my data holdings from Here Technologies. And I'm going to click Find Data. This window is pre-populated with the coordinate from where my cursor is, and it searched through all my data holdings, and these are all the files that it found that intersect within 100 meters of where I clicked on the data. And I'm going to scroll through, and I'm going to select a single file, and click Load Data. It doesn't matter if this data is in a different coordinate system. QT Mahler will detect the different systems or the units, and do the proper conversions as needed. Now once the data loads, we have mobile terrestrial LiDAR data, along with the airborne data. As I mentioned before, when we were just looking with the airborne data, it was really difficult to see ground level, especially underneath the porticos and underneath some of these overhangs. But by toggling on the mobile terrestrial LiDAR data, it really fills in the gaps of the system. And even though we have two different data sets loaded from different technologies, we can still interact with the data in very much the same way. I'm going to go ahead and create a height profile straight across both data sets. Click on Profile Analysis Tool. And here's my profile scatter plot of both data sets. I can toggle them on and off independently within this window. And again, zoom in and take measurements as needed using the measurement tool. I'm going to take a measurement of this person standing at a little over five feet. One thing to keep in mind as you start working with data from different technologies is that not every point is going to have the same attributes. I'm going to zoom in here a little bit. I'm going to select one of the mobile terrestrial LiDAR points by holding down the shift key and left clicking. And I can scroll down and I can see all the attributes present within the last file, including the RGB. Those RGB values were appended from a co-registered camera. Now if I go back and select one of the airborne LiDAR points, scroll down, and you'll see that that's lacking. So there's an example if we're going to do any kind of analysis based on the RGB values, that that analysis can only be performed on the mobile terrestrial LiDAR data, and not on all the points loaded. But what we could do if we wanted to combine the analysis is rather than visualizing the RGB values from the terrestrial LiDAR scanner, we can switch that over to the intensity value. And now we're looking at the intensity values which is basically the amplitude of the energy that got returned back to the scanner for both the airborne and the terrestrial LiDAR data together. I'm going to turn off the height color. And I'm going to brighten up the scene a little bit so we can see this grayscale intensity image a little clearer. One last thing to note before mixing technologies is the data units and coordinate systems as I mentioned earlier. QT Modeler will automatically prompt you when detected, but there may be times where the data is not tagged properly in the geotags. In those cases, you might need to override those tags and then go to Edit, Convert Coordinate System to have them match up. And that's it for this episode's Tech Notes, and thanks for watching.